Okay, it's uh, 11.50, so let's get started. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Fawad Khalik, um, and I have uh, with me Tony and uh, Gal. So all of us are part of the courier team, and uh, we are trying to bring you one of these uh, important features as part of uh, OpenStack that I think pretty, pretty much all of you have been uh, waiting for. So um, I, I'm from PlumGrid. Uh, Tony is from Mirakura, and uh, Gal is uh, with Huawei. And Gal is our PTL for Courier Project. So with that, I think let's get started. Before we get started, by the way, I can't see any of you here. Uh, I would like to do a quick uh, um, survey of how many of you, used, uh, of you have used Courier so far? No one. Oh, we got, we got a couple of guys there. Nice. And how many of you, you have used uh, Magnum? Nice. We have uh, around 20 people. <laughs> That's good. So great. <laughs> Uh, let's get started. Uh, this is us, and if any of you have any questions later on, you know, uh, please feel free to reach out to um, us about that. So the agenda for today's presentation is uh, uh, we'll talk about a brief introduction about uh, Magnum and Neutron. Uh, we, like, we would like to cover the integration of Neutron, Magnum, and Courier, so I'm not assuming uh, here like all of you know all the things. So we'll give a brief introduction, uh, and those of you who have background about some of these things, please bear with us. Um, then we'll go over the problems which are there today in the networking for nested containers. And the way the, the, the solution exists today is there are some limitations there, and Gal will cover that. After that, I'll go over the design of how this problem is being addressed in the OpenStack community right now, and the solution of that and how this is being uh, you know, implemented. And uh, then uh, Tony will cover the uh, capabilities using this design, uh, any limitations, considerations that you guys should be aware of. Uh, what is the current status of uh, the work so far? And what are the next steps or roadmap on the career for this particular project? And then Q&A for you guys to uh, ask any questions if you have any. So with that, let's go, let's go over a bit of introduction about Magnum. Uh, Magnum is a container as a service for uh, uh, OpenStack. And uh, the way Magnum works is that uh, Magnum uses your OpenStack components like Nova, Neutron, uh, to uh, provision these container orchestration engines or your uh, things like Docker Swarm or Kubernetes or Mesos uh, using your uh, OpenStack components like Nova, Neutron, Cinder Glance. And it has this notion of Bayes and Bayes model. Bayes like a node where your container orchestration engine uh, runs, and that is capable of provisioning your containers and you know, its networking and et cetera. Um, and over here, what you see in this uh, uh, figure is you have a couple of Nova instances, both of are running. Uh, containers, and this in, in this example is a Docker Swarm uh, bay uh, provisioned by Magnum. And similarly, if you're running Kubernetes, uh, you have a Nova instance. The, the only difference that you see over here is uh, there's a pod, which is like a logical entity, a minimal deployable uh, unit uh, for Kubernetes. So Magnum is capable of provisioning uh, all of them um, uh, using its uh, APIs. So the way it works is that uh, a high-level architectural overview of Magnum, this is important. Uh, background for the information that we'll share of how the integration actually is going to work. So please pay close attention. You have Magnum client, which talks to Magnum API, and then there's a, there's a component as part of Magnum, which is Magnum conductor, which communicates with OpenStack Heat, and which also communicates with uh, internal uh, container orchestration engines like uh, Kubernetes and Docker Swarm. So you have Heat, Heat templates, which Magnum you know, uh, provisions. It uses Nova, Neutron, Cinder Glance uh, to you know, launch these infrastructure layer VMs. Uh, where then Magnum goes on, goes on and you know provision these container orchestration engines. So the way it works is that at high level, uh, all of this goes through, and you're, you use heat templates, you use you know cloud in it, uh, provision um, the infrastructure for containers. Let's say Kubernetes or Docker Swarm, and let's say you have Docker up and running in one of these Nova instances, and then you're you're you know good to go and able to launch uh, containers. And this is what Magnum provides you uh, today as part of OpenStack. A bit of introduction of Neutron. I'm pretty sure it does not need an introduction. So 30 seconds. It's a network as a service for OpenStack, and avoids you, provides you the ability to you know, provision rich network topologies using different pluggable backends. It's technology agnostic. And it's extensible if you want to add your own features. You, know, uh, you can add your own APIs and functionality. It's part of it. And you also uh, provides the capability to use uh, different uh, advanced uh, services like load balancer, firewall, et cetera. And the goal over here is that Courier, Magnum, uh, and a Neutron is going to come together and provide you networking for containers. Over here, I'm going to hand it over to Gal, who's going to cover uh, the 
introduction about Magnum and the problems we have with container networking so far. Okay, thank you, Fawad. Uh, everyone can hear me? Okay, I can't see, so there's no. Um, we had a, a career introduction uh, session today in the morning. We had it at uh, 9 o'clock. Uh, I'll do a very brief introduction uh, to anyone that is new to the project, but uh, if you want more details, it's better that you uh, watch uh, the presentation. So what is career? Career is essentially, uh, this, this sentence uh, says it quite well, we recognize that there are uh, Users and deployers are deploying OpenStack and are starting to deploy uh, side by side or inside uh, this new thing uh, called containers. And they prefer to do it with their own orchestration engines, their own uh, networking models like uh, Kubernetes has uh, CNI, uh, Docker has the CNM, the lib network. Uh, and all of these are, are evolving, are experimental, are quite uh, different and still new in terms of the features they offer and services in terms of networking. Uh, career mission is to take all of this and bridge it to OpenStack, bridge it to OpenStack networking, to Neutron. Uh, we realize that Neutron is relatively uh, mature. It's uh, relatively production grade. It has the richness of all the solution. Uh, features that are being tested, CI, um, being developed by a large community. And we are using Neutron and OpenStack advanced uh, services uh, to implement networking for containers. So you can see here that uh, we can see that if we look at uh, Neutron abstraction and Lib Network abstraction, they are quite similar. And networking is evolving. Uh, we are starting to put applications in the middle, and we can see this for containers. We can also see this for VMs. But if you look at the high-level uh, abstraction way, it's still we are connecting uh, endpoints to networks and ports to networks in Neutron. We have this similar concept, so if we are running this in mixed environments and together, why having to correlate and connect few solutions when we can do it at one. And uh, Career is, of course, fully open source. It's part of uh, OpenStack Big Tent. We are doing everything uh, the open source way. We have a weekly IRC meeting. Um, it's, it's alternating meetings, so we have people in Japan, in Europe, and in US, so you have no excuse. Uh, any time zone is good for you. Uh, we are doing everything from the design to the implementation uh, in the OpenStack way. And Career is working on one end on the container communities like uh, Kubernetes, Mesos, and Docker Swarm uh, on one side, and uh, also bridging between individual containers like Docker and Rocket, and bridging all of these to OpenStack. But we are also working on the OpenStack side on supporting features that are needed for this uh, connection. One example is the network tags. Uh, that is uh, an important feature for us for attaching existing networks and so on. And we are also working with other OpenStack container-related projects like Magnum and Koala to bring uh, full uh, integration. This is a quick overview on the components. Uh, we have uh, already uh, full integration with Docker Lib Network and Docker Swarm. Uh, this includes the pluggable IPAM for, uh, for Docker. We know to map all of this to Neutron IPAM and to Neutron uh, construct. Uh, Tony showed uh, in the morning today uh, about our Kubernetes uh, integration, which I think is quite an exciting design that you should all get familiar with. Uh, and we are able to enhance um, containers' workloads today with uh, Neutron constructs, with advanced services, with security, and all of these uh, things. And we are also doing uh, features that are helping deployers and users to use containers. For example, a feature that uh, Muhammad presented in the morning about being able to attach to existing networks. So we, you can attach you have a network, it has VMs on it, you can attach to this network your containers workload and have a mixed network 
control with Neutron for VMs, for containers, for nested containers and VM. So what are the problems that we see in the realm of uh, nested containers? And just a quick introduction, nested containers uh, is all about, uh, is about isolation, right? We want to have uh, a tenant uh, isolation between our containers, so we run them inside uh, tenant VMs. And these uh, environments, and this is uh, what Fawad uh, mentioned about Project Magnum, these environments are too complicated right now. <clears throat> they require, first they require two networking uh, solutions just to connect between two containers in our environments, and I will soon show it. Uh, they make it very hard to enforce policy construct, to enforce uh, isolation, to enforce uh, things that we need in networking because of this complication. Uh, and of course there are the, the usual concern of performance and overhead uh, of management. Now we can see, we can see in this, uh, this is a quite common uh, setup for nested uh, containers. We have tenant VMs and the tenant deploy containers inside of those VMs. And usually we have a Neutron uh, solution that is doing the networking connecting between the VMs. And then, we have, and then we have a whole different solution inside uh, the VM just to connect the containers. So you can imagine the lifetime of a packet in this environment going all over <coughs> with all over these uh, layers. And performance, it's one concern, but this can be avoided. You could use Flanel host mode, and there are solutions, but uh, as I mentioned earlier, I f to me the, most, the more critical problem is when you look a, bit, a step a bit further, like how do you orchestrate these environments, how you deploy them, how you manage and monitor this. Um, I've spent some time uh, monitoring and debugging virtualized environments lately, and it's complicated enough with one solution, and now you have two solutions just to connect between two containers. Uh, not to mention how you do upgrades and updates of these environments and things like that. It's just make things complicated as, uh, and as Fawad and Tony will soon uh, show, we already have solutions in Neutron that can handle these use cases, that can solve these with one infrastructure uh, and simplify this environment. And career mission in this realm is to expose all of these solutions to the user uh, and simplify all of this. And this is just uh, a quick example that's showing us some of the challenges of enforcing policy in these environments. We can see here we have three VMs and they are connected, uh, they're owned by a single tenant and they're connected to a single uh, neutral network. And then think about this, solu this uh, thing, when the tenant is trying to deploy containers from different networks inside of, this, uh, inside of these three VMs. We have a mix of uh, networks and a mix of uh, responsibility, which makes policy enforcement and security a big challenge. And uh, I'll hand over to Fawad now that is going to describe some of the solutions uh, that we have with Career. Thanks, Gal. So guys, let's go over uh, the solution uh, that uh, we proposed as part of uh, 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 this problem that the gal just went over. Uh, before we go over there, uh, let's discuss some requirements and the use cases around this area. So the requirement is that um, as part of Magnum, Magnum deploys these containers inside the VMs. You would want to have one network that would uh, be connected or one network be connecting your VMs and containers and bare metal and not to have to worry about uh, these multiple layers. The other requirement is that uh, the the policy enforcement has to come from one plane. Um, the other thing is that as part of this uh, implementation as of uh, um, uh, nested networking, all of the components that are uh, available in OpenStack uh, should be the ones which are providing you know, uh, networking for containers other than something which is coming from outside. And there are like many other things which uh, we can go over. Uh, that's like on coming like from the requirement point of view. If you talk about the use cases, uh, let's, let's go over some of these use cases that we have listed over here. 
Um, you have a VM which is running inside, you have a container which is running inside a VM, or you have a container which is running on bare metal. That should be able to communicate with another container which is running inside another VM or on a bare metal, same or different host. And that should be able to communicate uh, seamlessly using neutron networks. So you don't have to worry about uh, anything um, other than uh, neutron to you know, uh, provision networking or separate networking or have to worry about uh, separate you know, uh, uh, planes. The other thing is that your containers which are inside the VMs uh, or your containers which are on bare metal should be able to communicate with your virtual machines. Uh, in this case, uh, the example is like hybrid uh, uh, workloads where you have some containers, you have some VMs, and we have talked to some operators which have lots of use cases around this area, and uh, they, this is like one of the main reasons they want to have a single networking plane. Another thing is that, like, say you have something um, uh, behind uh, in the physical world, you have physical boxes, uh, let's say maybe using Ironic or something else, and you have uh, nested or bare metal containers, and you want to have communication uh, across both. That's another one of the uh, you know areas that's uh, this use cases are being covered here. Then um, Neutron becomes the first class citizen for networking for these containers, and you get all the capabilities that Neutron provides uh, in in this design. And Gal mentioned and Tony mentioned in the previous session for Courier is that Neutron offers so many features which are well tested, they're running in production uh, with those specific you know backend implementations. And we already know they work and they, are, they have production mileage. Uh, why go down something a new path? You know, you should leverage something which is, has you know, been running for two years in production. And this is where you get all the features. The other benefit over here is that, our use case over here is that you have, um, let's say, new features being added in Neutron, uh, something, let's say, QoS being added, or let's say, tap as a service being added. You would want to use those. How would you use those? You don't have to you know, add something new in Courier or something new for container specific networking. You just leverage that. So all those benefits are being leveraged over here uh, uh, as part of the use cases. Then another important point over here is that micro-segmentation or policies, uh, how do you enforce that? And this is where you know, neutron security groups come to the picture. Uh, you don't have to worry about something you know, going in inside the VMs and you know, maybe putting some IP tables or something else uh, to pro provide your policy, which is different from your VMs and all the above three points where you have bare metals and virtual machines for communication of policies. So all of that is taken care of using you know, consistent policy enforcement. And of course, the advanced networking capa capabilities which are there as part of Neutron uh, are also being leveraged uh, as, you know, uh, as part of the use cases. And all of these use cases will be addressed by the solution that we propose here uh, in this session. Now let's, let's talk about uh, how, like, how this is going to work. So the di diagram you're looking over here is that uh, we have two Nova instances. Um, both of them are connected to a port. And you see four neutron networks, network one, network two, three, and four, and all of them are connected to a router. You have containers inside both of these Nova instances, container one, container two uh, in, the, in the left Nova instance, and the container three and container four in the right Nova instances. Uh, one more thing, uh, refer I'm referring back to the slide I showed on Magnum. Magnum provisioned these Nova instances uh, using its APIs and heat templates, and it provisioned, let's say, Docker Swarm or Kubernetes inside these Nova instances. Now you have these containers being provisioned, and they need connectivity from Neutron, and not from something another, on, uh, another layer on top of it. And this is where how it's going to work is that uh, in Neutron, there is this uh, new feature or extension uh, being added. It's called uh, trunk ports or VLAN aware VMs. Um, we leverage that feature to provide functionality of networking for nest nested containers. And how it's going to work is that you have these white ports onto these uh, Nova instances. These ports are responsible for providing networking to these Nova instances. And Nova instances can, can be a VM, can be a container, can be bare metal. Uh, then you see these uh, little blue ports over there with uh, these VLAN tags associated to them. These ones are which will provide networking to these uh, containers inside. So let's say there's a logical diagram over here. You have container one uh, attached to this port, which is with the VLAN 100 on the left instance, container two attached to um, another port, uh, which has VLAN 200 on the left instance. Then container three on VLAN 400 on the right instance, and then VLAN uh, of container four on VLAN 100 on the right instance. I put uh, these VLAN 100 um, uh, intentionally over there to show that this VLAN does not have to be unique across instances. The uniqueness of the VLAN relies or lies only within that particular port. That white port over there is called a trunk port, and I'll go over the details of what it is and how it really works. And the goal over here is that. When you provision these ports, these are standard 
uh, neutron ports. So neutron port, let's say you are using L2 gateway, you provision a port that's connected to a physical box, and that's a neutron port. Using tap as a service, uh, that's where you're sending your traffic, that's another neutron port. You provision a container, and you want to have networking going to the container, that's your neutron port. So this, in the end, is a standard neutron port, which means for upgrades or for anything else from that perspective, there's nothing new for an operator perspective. You provision a neutron port, you associate over here through the trunk port API, and boom, your networking for containers is up and running. And if you go to the bottom side of the picture, you have uh, these four networks. They were provisioned through neutron APIs, or they were provisioned through, let's say, courier using a, a lib network driver, or let's say, uh, using the Kubelet uh, uh, courier CNI driver. And you provision them, they leverage Neutron, they're up and running. At this point, the, the lower layer or base networking is coming from Neutron, and you have this topology up and running. And let's say these two containers need to communicate with each other. The packet from the container will come to this particular VM. Uh, in this case, VLAN 100. The, the networking implementation will, will you know, strip, will figure out there's a mapping of a VLAN to this particular container, will strip off the VLAN, will you know, onboard this onto a particular uh, network, whichever it's supposed to go. Let's say VLAN 100 going to network one, VLAN 200 on the left instance going to network one as well. They should be able to communicate with each other. If they want to communicate with this NOVA instance on the right side, they should be able to communicate as well because network one is connected to the neutron outer. At that point, since it's a port, it doesn't matter because everything else is standard and everything else is works in the same way. Because as soon as this onboarding mechanism through VLAN uh, is happening, everything else is standard neutron, and there's, no, there's nothing special over there, uh, or there's nothing new over there, uh, which is not happening today. On the right side, if you see that similarly, you have VLAN 400 and VLAN 100 for these two respective containers attached to this neutron network, and they should be able to communicate. One thing to notice over there is that these two NOVA instances, they are attached to network three and four respectively, and network three and four are again neutron networks, and um, the dotted line coming from this white port to this network three and dotted line coming from this white port uh, to this network four shows that these are trunk ports and the other ones are uh, uh, the, uh, you know, they have VLAN tags. So you could have your, uh, the, the VM port also connected to network one, which means there is no restrictions and uh, it's completely flexible from that perspective. And in the end, again, going back to the basics here, the takeaway from this slide is that Again, this is just a port for you, a Neutron port. Attach it wherever you want, as Neutron allows you to do it, and you'll have connectivity uh, using the design that you're proposing uh, as part of the career Magnum and Neutron integration. With that, I'm going to go over how Neutron trunk ports work. So let's say you have a NOVA instance. Trunk port is like a logical entity. It's not really a specific port. So you provision a NOVA port, or let's say you have a VM. Let's, let's take an interesting scenario here. You have a NOVA VM with a port, uh, let's say port zero over here, it's already up and running. And now what you do with that, you, used to, you go to use uh, these trunk port neutron or VLAN aware neutron, VLAN aware VM's neutron extension. And let's say I want to use, make port zero a trunk port for this VM. And as soon as you do it, you see this dotted line or this box, this, this rectangle come outside of it. And now you're capable of adding additional ports to this trunk port as tough sub ports. And you can specify uh, their VLAN ID or their metadata. Uh, right now we have uh, VLAN support over there, and maybe in the future we'll have a, a more type of segmentation uh, available as well. So let's say now as part of this, you have port one and port two uh, uh, also associated with this particular trunk port. And port one is connected to this network one, port zero to network zero, and port two, network two. Now as you see, over here, the mapping is really happening based on the VLAN. You have one port, you have one NOVA instance. NOVA instance is running uh, containers inside, and your container to this network communication is happening through this mapping, which is happening through the trunk port, which contains information like, uh, you know, VLAN ID, you know, uh, uh, all the information that a, a standard port has, like a MAC address, IP address, etc. Who owns this? Um, um, yeah. One more thing that to note over here is that, uh, you know, some of you must be wondering that who owns this port? Normally, when you provision a port, there is like uh, uh, there is a host binding. So the host binding for this host is actually coming from the parent port, which in this case is the port zero, and port zero resides on one of the compute nodes, and that's where the host binding is inherited all the way to these containers because these containers in the end also live on the same host. Um, so in the end, I would like to summarize over here. You have uh, these ports combined into one WIF, and the port zero becomes a trunk, and port one and port two become uh, the sub ports for this trunk. 
and this is how the communication will flow. And we'll take any questions. This is, this is new, and if you guys have any questions, we'll be happy to take those. Um, now, coming from an operator perspective, how this uh, actually works in the entire picture, you have Magnum, you have Neutron, you have Courier, you deployed, let's say, Kubernetes or uh, Docker Swarm, and you want to see, like, how does it work? So let's say you're being a user here, and being a user, you are able to communicate with Magnum client, and uh, you say, I, I'm going to select this provision, this Bay model of type uh, Docker Swarm, and this Bay model uh, I'm going to use to provision a Bay on a couple of Nova instances with the uh, you know, Swarm manager and Swarm agents, and uh, you know, all this communication happens. It goes and provision a Nova instance. This is a logical diagram, by the way. I have one Nova instance here. Uh, shows everything in one box. So you provision Docker Swarm, it provisions Docker Daemon, and the goal over here is that when Magnum launches these Nova instances, uh, it will know that now it needs to provide networking from Courier uh, and Neutron. It will provision the Courier agent as part of these Nova instances. And as soon as Courier agent is there, it will be capable of doing all the things we talked about in the last two slides. Um, at that point, Docker Daemon is, let's say in this case, we're using Docker Swarm, so uh, use lib network for that. And Docker Daemon is talking to Courier agent through, of course, the, the driver implementation, which is a remote driver. And as soon as you go to Docker Swarm, um, you start provisioning containers, or you, start, you provision a network before and start provisioning containers, those containers will come. Uh, courier agent will take the information about the container, will know what IP to, well, IP to sign. And at this point, one more piece of information is that this will be intelligent enough to figure out what available VLANs are there. We'll create those VLANs, uh, make sure that those VLAN information is given to Courier, which is a service running uh, on one of the nodes that will communicate with Neutron. Using the trunk port Neutron extension, uh, this will go and add a sub port onto this particular trunk so that the communication for that container will start happening on that particular Neutron network. I'm going to go slow again. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I went too fast here. <laughs> so um, the, the thing to note over here is that Docker daemon is running here with lib network, and it will communicate with courier agent. Courier agent, its responsibility is simple. Um, define the VLAN, or, which is available, create a VETH pair, and attach to the container inside. That's it. At that point, it will hand over the rest of the job to the courier to talk to Neutron with enough metadata to go back to this instance and create a support. At that point, both the ends will come and attach to each other, and you'll have communication of the Nova. Uh, uh, instance containers running as a Nova instance to be able to uh, talk to uh, over neutron networks. One thing to note over here is that these VLAN IDs are not like not supposed to be exposed to the user, so you don't have to worry about what VLAN to use or what not to use. And uh, this will be uh, a VLAN ID or VLAN or segmentation allocation engine responsible for you know allocating these internally and make sure there's no conflicts and they're unique as per their scope, which is in this case is a trunk port. So with that. All of this will be able to have your networking up and running for these containers running inside these uh, Nova instances in a sense that you're uh, good to take it uh, for production grade uh, container networking in OpenStack. And this is where I'm going to hand it over to Tony to talk about capabilities and considerations and next steps. Yeah, thank you. So we covered uh, a lot of ground. Uh, so I expect that, that you will have a few questions. So I'm not going to take. Uh, too long on that. Hopefully, I'll try. Uh, yeah. So Fawad covered the, the the trunk and the support. And one thing that you have to take into consideration uh, when you're given uh, such a tool that is is quite powerful and and it allows for uh, a painless uh, maintenance of the of the ports that that you get on the containers is that uh, we have to get each of our integrations, uh, be it Swarm as he as he detailed. How, how that looks like, that there is a courier agent that, that talks to a courier outside and so on. Uh, the Kubernetes one looks different, the Mesos one looks different. So it is, it is important uh, for the operators that want to provide different uh, services that we do this in a way that it is consistent, the way in which the segmentation ID is allocated, so that when you want to inspect, that, that is going to be easy. Uh, the Neutron spec uh, and the, the first patches for the implementation give a, a pretty good idea about uh, how you can consult uh, that information. So if, if you want to reach out 
I can give you more information about that later. Uh, but it, it manages very well the resources for you, so if, if you need to manually delete something or you want to manage that yourself instead of Magnum, that, that is something uh, that you can do. And, and the good thing about that, uh, ab about this solution, uh, is that it gives you further isolation. So if you're in a Magnum uh, or, or a manually managed uh, nested environment, uh, the good news is the VM that may belong to a tenant. The tenant may have several users for the containers. So the, the tenant uh, VM, which may have some logs or some things that you don't want to be seen, uh, that kind of stuff don't, doesn't need to be exposed with a floating IP anymore because the floating IPs will be able to be assigned to containers in the future, maybe even with port forwarding that you will have a single floating IP for uh, several port consumptions. Uh, as well, the, the good thing about the spec is that it, it gives freedom uh, in terms of the segmentation technology. So right now it's, uh, it's VLAN, but if that would be problematic for your environment or uh, a vendor would find some better way to do that that, that takes less resources or uh, gives you more than 4,096 uh, per port, that should be relatively easy to add, it's just adding an integer and then that the vendor is supporting it. There is always a bit of the concern that what happens if uh, some vendor implements some and not others, am I kind of a bit locked in? So what we expect is that the VLAN one is going to be like the, the standard that everybody implements, so, so that, should be, that shouldn't be too big of a concern. Um, another, another thing that, that is, um, a concern with, with, the, with the VLAN usage is that, so nowadays you could potentially have different VLANs communicating out of your VM and you may say, okay, but I want my, my tenant VM to be able to send traffic over, over that just like it was doing up until now. Uh, so the answer to that is probably you should be able to define some VLANs that you don't want the location to, to take from you. And, and the good news is that those uh, VLANs, that VLAN traffic is just going to work exactly as it is, as that is uh, mandated by the, by the specification. So, limitations. Uh, I had to bring a bit of bad news, right? So, uh, the policy is applied at the host level right now, which, I mean, the, the container communication, container to container inside the same host, uh, even if it goes uh, to the host, through the through the beard IO and so on, it, it it will have an extra copy, right? Um, through the through the host kernel, and and it will give a chance to to the neutron agent to do something with that apply policy, which is, is which is what we want. Uh, in the future, it may be that we use something, uh, some extra technology like BPF to give uh, a lighter weight uh, policy for the for the VM so that the traffic container to container inside the same VM doesn't need to aggress uh, the VM, but of course that always depends on how much of a pain that is for the operators, and we will really welcome your feedback on that. As I said before, only VLANs for now, even though I, I suspect that n when Newton comes around we're going to have something more. Uh, obviously, since the, since the VM is running containers, what if the container is broken? I could change um, the VLAN that my container is plugged into, right? And then that would actually move it to another support. Uh, so that is a concern. I mean, even though it gives you more isolation, uh, you should still uh, use uh, container isolation technologies uh, like SE Linux or, or whatnot, uh, because otherwise, yeah, the networks are only be gonna belong to the tenant because you cannot actually create a support uh, for a different tenant on, on your tenant port. Uh, only the admin can do that, but it's it's something to keep in mind. Uh, finally, the logging. So for for these components that we're going to have, so the, the the courier agent that does the the translation and creates the neutron resources usually is going to be deployed on a admin owned VM, and it's a bit of a pain for the admin to have to go into the VMs for each of the tenant uh, deployments and, and have to, to collect the logs from there. So that's an area where we want some input about what people would prefer if we just build in support to export those logs or it's something that, that 
the people prefer to handle by themselves. And uh, yeah, it will, it will for now, allow it, uh, make you choose another um, implementation than the reference implementation because uh, OBS is still, as far as I know, if somebody knows, uh, more current information doesn't support queue in queue, which is necessary for, for doing that. So yeah, that's also another uh, concern. So you would probably be able still to, to have ML2 and use a provider for, for this and a provider for the rest of your deployment if you really are uh, running OVS. So the current status is that the spec was approved uh, both on the, on the Neutron side, uh, Russell Bryan did that, uh, Fawad did the one for the courier side, so everything is kind of ready to, to, to go into implementation. The Neutron people have already started and there's patches posted with good reviews. It's gonna be there really soon. Then uh, the Swarm integration is completed, so we usually go first for bare metal integration, uh, just to, to get all the, uh, all the basic infrastructure to integrate with, uh, with the orchestration engine, and then we move that into the, into the nested world. Uh, so the swarm nested uh, part, though that split courier agent that, that Fawad presented is something that still needs to be done, but we have all the, all the path already walked about doing the lib network driver and we have all that uh, library ready for us to use. Kubernetes, uh, I demoed earlier, it already works, but it needs to be upstreamed. Uh, and it will have s probably a very similar design to the Mesos one, so in the design sessions, work sessions that we're gonna have later, we're gonna cover that. Uh, and we're going to try to come up with a, with a model that can be shared between the different integrations that allows you to, 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 to reason uh, in a very similar way, like using CNI uh, when we're available, not in Swarm, and, and so on. So it, it will give you a sense of uh, familiarity. So the next steps, which you can help define by attending the, the work sessions, is to just make sure that the, the Neutron uh, transport implementation gets there, merged, and we can start to use it, to finish the bare metal integrations, uh, which we're on, on a good path, but we welcome any contribution. Then uh, make more resources available. So for example, for the Swarm integration, now you can choose existing networks, as we said, but maybe you want that when you create a Docker network that it automatically links you up to a specific router, a Neutron router, or that you can tag the containers when you start them with Swarm and say, I want this container to serve an endpoint that I have behind the neutron load balancer. So you should be able to do that. And these are small things that are driven by, uh, by requests that we get from the community and, uh, and that will empower, uh, empower the usage but are currently not there. Uh, so yeah, we need uh, to make the magnum pieces like hit templates, images, and so on so that, uh, for example, uh, the, the, the swarm one will have the, this small courier agent, the, the Mesos and the Kubernetes one will have the API watcher and the, the worker nodes will have the CNI driver. And yeah, that's, that's basically it. Okay, there is this small piece about the administration VM, about the logging and so on, but uh, I think this should be relatively smaller uh, than the other ones. So, you're welcome to ask any question to any of us, uh, and we'll try to answer to the best of our ability. All right. Okay. A uh, couple of questions. One is on performance. So sure. uh, every time a container is created, uh, you'll have to uh, create neutron ports and supports. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to slow down the creation rate. Have you given any thought to the performance? Doesn't work? Okay. So first, uh, there is this feature that uh, I presented that we can actually, and we are free, it's right now only for networks, but we can basically bind it to already created ports, okay? So you could have this pool of ports uh, pre-allocated and pre-created, and then you only do the binding part. Um, we haven't yet got into uh, testing the latency and what it means to create a port uh, in the system, but we'll definitely need to do this. Yeah, in, in the bare metal case, 
from the Kubernetes experience, uh, we found that it adds almost nothing. Uh, like, yes, the CNI driver uh, has to go, uh, has to get some information, so it has to go to, to, the, to the API to, to request that extra information. And, and more than the time that that takes to, to be done, the, the concern for me is a bit more like, that creates a potential bottleneck where you would have to maybe to add more API uh, nodes than you would have otherwise because you have this extra request coming from the from the worker nodes. But but yeah, time-wise, it's very very negligible. Okay, maybe we'll. Uh, I'd like to understand the pre-allocation thing later. Sure. Any sure. quick comment on the status of uh, ironic networking and is that ready to work with Kuri? Well, we haven't uh, yet explored this area, um, but it's definitely something that uh, we want. And I believe that if ironic integration with Neutron is going to be uh, good enough, there's, I don't see a reason why it won't work uh, with Courier just as well. But it's definitely something we are uh, going to explore. Yeah, I mean, first we're targ targeting bare metal, like this is not deployed by ironic. Uh, but yeah, we need, we need more people that that is running Ironic to join us and to, to give us their use cases, show us the example deployments they are doing, and then we'll work it, at, uh, work it in our uh, roadmap. Thanks. So, uh, a question over there? Two questions. Sure. Uh, would this same concept work for nested VMs? If you have like VMs running? You mean a VM in a VM? Yes. Yeah, yeah it, it would be very similar, yeah. And do you have to use Courier or, and or Magnum to do this, or can you manually assign these subports to these e VMs? Yeah. So Courier is for containers if you're running nested VMs. Um, the, the, the good thing is that Neutron uh, trunk point implementation is agnostic of, uh, you know, we are a user of that. So you could actually use and, you know, uh, uh, you know build your automation around that. Thanks. I yeah, I mean, just a sec. We have a lot of uh, we, we have people that they don't use Magnum and they are planning to script that by themselves. So, and, and the API is, is really nice and easy to use, and it, it prevents you from doing uh, bad things like like deleting a, a trunk where that it already has support. So, a right, couple questions. Um, so, are subnets actually shared with other non-container networks, or do do you have to have like an exclusive? Network and subnet for containers. There, there is no restriction. No restriction. Yeah. So, so you, we could use the same network for yeah. containers as well as yeah. VMs, and they can talk directly to each other. Yes, yes this is uh, one of the powerful things that uh, Courier brings, and this is a use case that we heard quite a lot. Okay. So, my other question is: can, Does that also apply to security groups? Can we correct? Sure, sure, sure. Go ahead. Containers? All, all the neutron resources. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so, so one, one thing that we have, for example, because. It, for example, in Kubernetes that, that I'm dealing the most with, uh, the policy is still being built in. It's not yet released. Uh, so in the meantime, so that the people can use security groups and, and have safer deployments, what we do is we allow you to, to specify as an option a security group. So when you would start something with Docker Run or with uh, Kubernetes uh, pod definition, you would be able to say, I want this UUID of, of this security group, and, and Courier takes care of that for you. Yes, about the security groups. Are the security groups on per port? I mean, support or on per uh, container? Uh, so they are per port, uh, which which means that both the support and the trunk can have different uh, security groups. So the, 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 the one of the biggest reasons why we're doing this, apart from all the ones that were listed, is that it is important that uh, all the networking endpoints that you have or that your uh, tenants or users have should should be something that you can target with the Neutron API and, and, and add something like a security group to a specific uh, port that belongs to a container because with the current state you you just cannot do that. Mm. I don't know if there are more questions. That's all. I think we are out of time anyway. Any questions? Please uh, reach out to us. And thank you so much for coming. Yeah. Thanks Bye. a lot. Thank